Alrighty guys, welcome back. And in this video, I want to talk to you about state. Now, state is pretty much a way that you can customize a component. And if you guys are thinking, wait a minute, we already can do that with properties. There is one big difference between properties and states of your component, and that is states, they can change. So I know I didn't mention this whenever we were talking about properties, but whenever you give your component a custom property, whenever you create it, it's set for life. So for example, say that you have this button component and you pass it in a property to make the background color green. Well, that button is going to be green for the rest of its life. Now, say that you wanted to make a button that could change colors every time the user hovered over it. Well, you couldn't use properties for that because properties, their values can't change. Whenever you have a value that needs changing on your component, you need to use state. It sounds confusing, but it's actually really easy. You can customize your component using properties or states. Whenever something is going to stay the same, use properties. Whenever it changes, use states. All right, fantastic. So let's go ahead and make one using states. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make um, a component called checkbox because you know whenever you have a checkbox, it can either be checked or unchecked. So what we're gonna allow the user to do is click that and then we'll have a bit of text that changes. It says, hey, you checked it, hey, you unchecked it, hey, you checked it, hey, you unchecked it. So since that bit of text is gonna change, that's why I decided to use state instead of property. So I'm just gonna name it checkbox and set it equal to react. Create class. All right. So I guess, first of all, we can just go ahead and render out the basic um, kind of structure of it. So again, like I said, what I'm going to have is I'm going to have a checkbox. And then under it, I'll have that uh, bit of text that says, hey, it's checked, hey, it's unchecked. So pretty much two different pieces to it. So for the message, which is pretty much just going to be equal to checked or unchecked, um, I'll just go ahead and do this. MSG. And now I need an if statement. So the way you access states are pretty much the same as properties, except instead of props, you just use state. So this state, and later on, we'll make one called checked. And we're going to say that this can either be equal to true or false. And I'll show you guys how to actually set that in just a second. So if it is checked, then this message, we're just going to say equal to checked. And then we'll say else message is unchecked. All right, so there is our basic logic right here. And before we go further in creating this component and actually rendering out um, any HTML, I want to build another function right here to show you guys how to set the initial value of your states. So there's a built in function and it's called get initial state. So whenever you call this function, was it going to auto populate for me? Ah, oh, come on, mate. Just do it. All right. So this is a function that you can use and its job is to basically set up the initial state of your component. And this is actually why it wasn't auto populating. All right. So what this does is it returns an object of your states. Now we're only going to have one state in here and that is checked. Now you can set this equal to true or false to start with. It really doesn't matter. I'm just gonna set this equal to true because I feel like it. And essentially what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set it up where whenever this is true, then that means that the user has a checkbox checked. If it's false, then it means that they didn't check it. So it's good for like filling out forms and stuff like that. All right, so right now we have one state checked and it's equal to true. And if you wanna add another one called like bacon, and set it equal to 32, you can. You can add as many states as you want, it doesn't matter. So now that we have a state variable, what we can do now is actually return some HTML. So return, and this is gonna be on multiple lines, so I need that, and all right. So again, like I said, we're gonna have a checkbox and then just some text below it. So since we're gonna have multiple elements, we need to wrap them inside a parent div. Now for your input, the type of this is going to be checkbox. Now, how should I set this up? All right, I'm just going to make it really basic at first, just so we make sure that something is displaying on the screen. And then later on, uh, I'll show you guys the cool stuff. 
So this is going to be the checkbox, and it's a valid checkbox right now. Now beneath it, I'll say uh, checkbox is, and then this will either say checked or unchecked. Now, in order to do that, all we need to do is we need to output this variable, which is msg. So msg, boom roasted, there you go. Now to actually render this, I just throw it in my render function and let me go ahead and refresh this and check it out. So right now it says checkbox is checked. Now why does it say that? Well, because we didn't add any logic really, we just went ahead and we rendered this component and the initial state of checked is equal to true. So then whenever it rendered, it said, all right, if this is checked, which it was, then the MSG, which is the message, set it equal to check. So it says checkbox is checked. And again, if this was false, then this would say checkbox is unchecked. Just like that. So we got our state working properly, but now we have to actually add the brains to make it work correctly. So let me change it back to true. And what I'm going to do after this is I'm going to say, all right, you see how whenever we load this page for the very first time, the default behavior of HTML and Chrome is to have these checkboxes unchecked. Well, we can actually overwrite that. And there's a built-in value called default checked. So this is essentially equal to true or false. You can set it equal to whenever, whatever you want. And you can actually just type it in. But what we want to set it equal to is the state of this checkbox, whether it's checked or unchecked or true or false. So how do we do that? Well, we need to access that state variable by this state checked. So again, if this is true, then it's going to say true right here and it's going to be checked, which it should be just like that. And if it was false, then it would be unchecked, which is pretty much the default behavior anyways, but you might as well have control over it. So we got this taken care of. Now we have one other bit of logic to work out. And that is we want to say whenever the user clicks this area right here, then we want this message to change. All right. So how do we do that? Well, we already learned in the last video how to work with event handlers. Now, instead of on clicked, which you may think it would be called, it's actually on changed. And that gets called whenever the user clicks this, whether they check it or uncheck it. So I'm going to write on change right here. Whenever the user clicks that checkbox, what do we want to call? Well, we're going to have to build a function in just a second. But for right now, we'll just say handle checked. And again, we didn't build this yet, but we'll build it right now. So again, whenever the user clicks this, we're going to call a function called handle checked. Now, again, that's equal to a function. Separate it with the comma and all right. So what do we want to do whenever they check the checkbox? Well, all we want to do is we want to pretty much set the state of the checked, which is either true or false. We don't know. We want to set it equal to the opposite of what it was before. So I say that because if it's checked and they clicked it, then we want to set it to false. If it already is false and they check it, then we want to set it equal to true. So we pretty much change it from whatever it is. Now, a really cool way that we can do that is this. Whenever you want to change the state of a component variable, then all you have to do is call this set state. Now, this takes an object and just like this, you can pretty much set it to whatever you want. So we can just go ahead and set the state equal to false or true or anything like that. But instead of just passing it in um, a value, we just want to get the current value of checked and make it the opposite. So how do we do this? Well, we already know how to get the state by using this, this state dot checked. And in order to flip it or give the opposite, we just write a X, what is it? X, exclamation mark in front of it. Basically the, the symbol above the one. All right. So what this is going to do again, whenever we click this, is this going to get the current state of the checkbox? Is it checked or not? Is this going to set the new state equal to the opposite of it? That's it. So now let's go ahead and refresh this and check it out. It now toggles 
unchecked and checked, unchecked and checked, boom, 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 boom. Now this is another important thing that I wanna point out. You see right here, all we did is we set the state. All right, but why does it automatically re-render? I mean, usually in most programs, you would have to be like, all right, so we're gonna change the state and then we need to explicitly tell React, all right, now we have to redraw this piece of the DOM, this piece of the web page. But the cool thing about React in components is you don't need to explicitly say whenever your state changes to redraw a certain part of your web page. It automatically watches for your states and where they can change. And whenever your state changes, that part of the web page gets redrawn automatically to fit that. So all we have to do is we worry about changing states and all the rest of the hardware gets taken care of for us. So look at this. We now got a custom part of this component that can change. So by default, it's checked. And whenever we uncheck it and check it again, it redraws or changes. Pretty sweet, huh? So again, just to sum things up, state is a lot like property. But whenever you use property, you can't change it like we're doing right here. So whenever you just wanna set a background color or maybe throw someone's name in there and it's gonna be that for the entire lifetime of the component, then use properties. Whenever you have part of your component that changes, in this example, this bit of text right here, then use state. Boom Roasted, thanks for watching, I'll see you later.